I've been keeping honeybees now for about five years and I've done a few things right. I've done a lot of things wrong. I'd like to think that I've learned from my mistakes, uh, but sometimes as you'll find out if you're interested in getting into beekeeping, uh, bees will surprise you. Um, but I'm going to start a video series uh, and I'm going to entitle it Simple Beekeeping because I feel like that best fits my philosophy on keeping bees. I'm not really a non-interventionist as far as beekeeping goes, um, but I don't micromanage my hives either. So I'd like to share uh, with you uh, the things that have worked for me, the things that have not worked for me, and I'm going to start uh, with the basics, the things that you need uh, if you're just getting started in beekeeping. So if you're interested in getting started in beekeeping, right now is the perfect time to get out there and start learning about what you need to do to get into it. Uh, today's date is November the 30th. Uh, it's about 73 degrees where I live, uh, so we've got some activity at this hive. But right now is a great time uh, to start learning about it. Um, and the reason I say that is uh, packages of bees won't actually be ready uh, from, the man from the supplier uh, warehouses uh, until you know, sometime in the next year in the spring, March, uh, April, May. Uh, that's when the packages will start being delivered either to the warehouses or to your door. So that gives you a few months to begin reading, uh, begin uh, getting on uh, internet forums, uh, B-Source is my favorite, um, to start collecting the equipment that you're going to need, uh, to start uh, assembling that equipment, and um, maybe get involved with the bee club, uh, maybe get a mentor to help you out to, uh, to learn from him or her. And I'm going to try my best to keep this video simple because I could stand here for the next three and a half days talking about beekeeping and I wouldn't, I would barely scratch the surface, I'm sure. Um, it's not that I know everything about it, it's just that there's so much to know. And if you do find somebody who says they do know everything about beekeeping, uh, take what they say with a grain of salt because once you start, once you stop learning about bees, uh, you've lost interest about, you've lost interest in them because there's never, uh, there's never nothing to learn about bees. There's always something new that you can learn about them. So there are lots of ways to get your hives. You can ob obviously you can order them already assembled uh, from your uh, from your bee suppliers, which there are a ton of bee suppliers to choose from and I'll provide links to um, to the ones that I use. But you can order them already assembled. You're going to pay an arm and a leg if you do that. Um, you're better off if you order them unassembled. Uh, they, they It's just four pieces. All you need is a hammer and maybe a bottle of glue to put these hives together in a bucket of paint uh, to uh, get them sealed up and, and weatherproof. You may have noticed that uh, this hive right here and actually pretty much all of my hives, I've got nine hives, and pretty much all of my hives are multicolored. And the reason for that is I'll go to Home Depot and I will look through the what they call the Oops paint rack. It's just paint that people have come in and had, had mixed for them and they went home and they didn't like it so they returned it. And Home Depot really can't sell that paint, uh, so what they do is they slap a $5 price tag or a $10 price tag somewhere along in there, and they sell it to whoever wants it. And honeybees really don't care about the color of their hives, so I've got a bunch of multicolored hives and I haven't heard the bees complain about it once. Um, you can also build your own hives if you want to, if you're handy in a wood shop, if you've got some three quarter inch lumber laying around or you just want to, if you're the type of person who wants to do it yourself. There's plans all over the internet. Um, uh, outlining the dimensions and everything else that you need. Uh, and of course another critical component of your beehive are your frames. Now um, there's a lot of different options for frames. You can go with uh, wooden frames with uh, wax wired in wax foundation. You can go with wooden frames uh, that are foundationless that just have a small ridge up under this top bar for the bees to hang off of or festoon off of and uh, build their comb uh, right off of the frame and uh, this is my preference right here. There are also plastic frames. Uh, the whole thing is plastic and this is my preference right here. It's just the uh, groove top and groove bottom uh, wooden frame with a plastic right cell waxed foundation. Now the reason that I like this so much is I don't have to fool with wire uh, with the wax foundation and the soft wax foundation you have to uh, you have to wire in and I, uh, I, 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 don't, I just don't want to take the time to have to do that. This right cell foundation, I have never had any trouble uh, getting bees to draw wax on it. They do a great job every time and it's very stable. When I first started beekeeping, uh, I 
did foundationless, and the reason that I did foundationless is because I didn't want to spend. I just didn't want to spend the money. I didn't really have the money, and well, I still don't. But I just didn't really have the money to um, to buy foundation. So uh, I figured, well, I'll just let the bees draw what they want to draw, and it works great. Um, one of the drawbacks is you have to have your hive absolutely perfectly level. Uh, if you don't. Um, you know, the, the frame will sit like this and the bees will draw down like this. So uh, you have to have your hive absolutely perfectly level, which can be done. It's not, uh, it's just kind of labor intensive. Uh, but one of, the other, one of the other downsides that I discovered uh, to that uh, approach was that when you put the frames in your extractor uh, to get the honey out of them, you get a lot of blowouts and that centrifugal motion uh, makes the uh, soft wax uh, break apart from the frame, crack in the middle. Now, they don't all do that, but you know, I would say you get probably 30% blowout uh, from your frames. So I've, I've really, I've essentially gotten tired of dealing with that. So I've gone, uh, I've gone back, to, I did use some of these in the beginning, but then I went to foundationless, but now I'm going back to all uh, plastic foundation. Another critical a piece of equipment that you're going to need is your hive tool. You cannot keep bees without a hive tool. You cannot get a crowbar or a screwdriver and think it's going to perform as well as a hive tool. My uh, preference for a hive tool is the Maxent frame lifter and I'll provide a, uh, a link to that. I'm kind of upset right now because I lost mine a week or so ago. It's probably buried in my truck somewhere, I'm not sure. But this is just a basic hive tool and uh, it works fine. But this is something you absolutely have to have. Uh, nothing, there's really no substitute for a good hive tool. Um, something else that is critical uh, equipment is your bee suit. Now, uh, you do not have to go out and buy a full bee suit. And you don't have to go out and buy a, uh, a jacket, a full jacket either. But you, I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you at least get a hood. And you can get into a hood for Fifteen or twenty dollars uh, with an Alexander veil. It's just a a uh, just a standard veil. It goes uh, over your head. It covers your neck and it wraps around your uh, up under your armpit so that it stays on. And it'll get the job done. If you wear a pair of jeans with it, your legs are protected. If you don't have too hot of a hive, you'll you'll be fine. Uh, the reason, well, when I first started beekeeping. I uh, watched a ton of YouTube videos and one of the guys that I followed was, uh, I'm sure you've probably seen him if you've done any research about honeybees, is the fat bee man, Don Kuchenmeister. Uh, he lives up in uh, North Georgia and he's, he's uh, really, really a very, uh, very experienced beekeeper. And he never wears anything. He doesn't wear a veil, he doesn't wear gloves, he doesn't wear anything. So I wanted to be just like Don, so I tried it. And that idea went out the window pretty soon because the first couple of times your face gets stung, you're going to be buying a veil. Um, I, I guess Don just has more experience than I do or his genetics are superior. I'm not sure. Either way, this is the one that I have chosen. It's uh, a ventilated suit from Better Bee. And I'll provide, I'll provide a link to Better Bee. And you can, if you want to, you can search, search through their stuff. I like it a lot because in my area it gets very hot in the summertime and this is uh, ventilated. It's got three layers, a mesh layer on the inside, a mesh layer on the outside, and in the middle <coughs> there's a, I'm not sure what you would call it, just a checkerboard uh, plaid looking layer uh, on the end and it allows for really good airflow and great sting protection too. Something else that I think is probably optional is uh, is gloves. I don't wear my gloves very often. In fact, I don't like to wear my gloves because it limits my dexterity with my hive tool uh, and, and handling the frames. But it would be good if you had a set of gloves um, just to have because sometimes your hives get angry. Sometimes you may uh, not be inspecting the hive properly. You may drop a frame. You may make them mad for whatever reason. The weather conditions may not be good and they get mad at you. And usually bees don't sting your hands but uh, if that's what they if they get mad enough, they they absolutely will. So gloves are not a necessity, but you know, for the bee yard every day of the week. But have some available because if you get into a hot hive, you're going to want some gloves for sure. Your smoker uh, is the next piece of gear that is absolutely indispensable. Smoke, <coughs> excuse me. 
Smoke uh, is a calming agent for bees. Um, something that I have seen for sale on a lot of the bee supply uh, uh, catalogs is smoker fuel. Now, I don't buy smoker fuel because uh, where I live, there's a lot of pine trees. I don't know if that's the case. I know pine trees don't grow everywhere in the country. and Not everybody can just pick up pine straw off of the ground and shove it in their smoker. But if you can't, run down to Home Depot and get you a bale. Or if that's not available, get you some straw. Uh, get you some tall grass, let it dry out for you know, two or three weeks. And that's smoker fuel. I don't think there's any point in wasting money on, uh, on smoker fuel because there's grass, there's leaves, there's pine cones, there's lots and lots of natural material around that's, that's free. Something else you're going to have to figure out is where you're going to get your bees from. There are quite a few options uh, for honeybees. You can get them in packages, you can get them in a nuke, which is just a five frame box of bees that's already established. It's going to cost you a lot more, but they're going to be farther along. Uh, most people start off keeping bees with packages. Um, Pretty much every one of the bee supply warehouses are going to sell packages. So figure out now where you're going to get your packages from because right now you can still get packages. Uh, pretty soon you won't be able, pretty soon you won't be able to because they sell out pretty fast. The general consensus for somebody who's starting to be a beekeeper is to start off with two hives. Uh, the reason for that is if you have one hive, uh, you can look at that hive, but you can't look at another one to compare it. Uh, if you have two hives, you can look at both of the hives at the same time, and if one of the hives is weak, you can say, well, why is this hive weak? If one of the hives is strong, stronger than the other hive, why is this hive strong? If one hive needs some resources, you can pull resources from the other hive. Another piece of equipment that you're going to need is a hive stand, and uh, you can buy a hive stand for $60 or $70 from pretty much every bee supply warehouse in the country. But if you do that, as far as I'm concerned, you're wasting your money. This right here, I'm sure you can see it, is a concrete block that you can buy at Home Depot for very cheap. All you need is two concrete blocks, uh, dig you out uh, some good foundations on the dirt, and make sure those, those uh, blocks are are um, relatively level if you're using solid foundation. Make sure they're absolutely perfectly level if you're using foundationless. And, and use that. They're solid, they will not rot, they won't be affected by the sun, they don't get affected by heat or cold or rain. They'll be there absolutely forever. Another piece of equipment that uh, I would say that you need, but you don't really have to buy it from a bee supply warehouse unless you want to, is what you call an entrance reducer. And entrance reducer, excuse me, entrance reducers are uh, essential equipment for beekeepers because if you get into a robbing situation with your bees and some other hive is coming to another one of your hives uh, to rob out that hive of honey, those that hive has got to be able to defend itself. So you can put that entrance reducer uh, in the in the uh, hive entrance down here, and you can. Uh, reduce that entrance to a defensible little hole uh, so that it's you know only the width of a couple of bees uh, right down to the width of one bee um, to make that hive more defensible for the bees that are inside it. Um, the reason that I said you don't have to buy one is because I use sticks. <laughs> I, t I find sticks in the woods, uh, pieces of limbs in the woods that are wide enough uh, to uh, go into that entrance and I'll just break a piece off that's long enough and block off a good piece of that uh, entrance to the hive and that has, that has worked for me. But if you want to buy uh, some entrance reducers, they're only like a buck and a quarter. So uh, it's not like it's, it's probably not going to break the bank if you do need to buy them. But just be aware that you don't really have to. So I was talking about books earlier. Uh, the original is of course Langstroth's Hive and the Honey Bee. And that is uh, it's called the Classic Beekeeper's Manual for a reason because the Reverend Langstroth was the, uh, the gentleman who invented these hives and uh, his theories are still very much valid today after 150 years or more. Uh, this is a really good read if you're interested in becoming a beekeeper and I would strongly suggest that you buy this book and read it cover to cover or at least have it on hand. 
Another book that I feel like you need to have on hand is uh, the newer version of The Hive and the Honey Bee. Uh, this is essentially a reference book. Uh, it's, I guess it's what you would call an encyclopedia of beekeeping. Uh, it's been updated quite a few times during its history. And uh, like I said, it's essentially a reference book. Uh, whatever you're having trouble with or whatever you uh, would like to learn about honeybees, you just go to the table of contents uh, and find it. You can uh, learn about the anatomy of a honeybee in, uh, in, in detail. Uh, you can learn about the anatomy or the um, process of queen rearing uh, and the diseases of the honeybee, different types of honeybees. Uh, the information in this book is absolutely incredible and there's lots of good pictures and uh, it's, it, it's a great book. It, it, it would absolutely pay to have this book around and this is published by Daydant. It, uh, is also, they are also a bee supply warehouse and I'll provide a link to them. But the Hive and the Honey Bee original and the Hive and the Honey Bee reference, encyclopedia, updated, whatever you want to call it, two excellent books to have around. Now as far as be, uh, beginning beekeeping goes, uh, there are quite a few options for that too. Personally, I don't, have a, uh, I don't have a good beginner's beekeeping book. I do have one. I don't think it's the best one available. But uh, just look on uh, your bee supply warehouses, look on Bee Source and see uh, what people say there. Uh, I'm really probably not a good authority on a, a beginner's beekeeping book. Now I just mentioned Bee Source. Bee Source is uh, a forum on the internet. I used to be very active on there, uh, but I have not been on there in quite some time. But it's a good forum. There are a lot of really good people on there. And you get involved there, ask questions. I actually search the forums first because there's really not a lot of questions that have not been asked already on B Source. So search first, and if you can't find what you're looking for, don't be scared to ask because there's always somebody uh, that's willing to answer. Uh, and there are a lot of people on there that have a ton of experience, much more than I do, uh, that'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Before I start wrapping up, I'd like to make a note about Varroa mites, uh, one of the biggest threats in the United States is uh, to honeybee colonies uh, is varroa mites. If you're going to keep bees, you've got to monitor your varroa mite levels. There are several ways to do that. Uh, the most accurate method is uh, what they call the alcohol wash. You get about a cup of bees, oh, I'm sorry, about a half of a cup of bees, which equals roughly 300 bees. You put them in a jar and you dump alcohol on top of them. You swish them around and yes, it does kill them. But you swish them around and then you strain the alcohol out and you count how many mites that there are. And if uh, you, if I can't remember exactly what the numbers are, but if your mites come out above a certain level, you need to do some treatment for your bees. Um, you can absolutely go the treatment-free route with your bees, <coughs> but if your bees do not show any hygienic tendencies, you're gonna you're gonna lose your bees. Uh, they they are not they're not gonna make it without some assistance. Now there are plenty of ways to treat for mites. Some of them are. Uh, a pest or um, a chemical, and a lot of them are, and some of them are organic. I use, I do not have treatment free bees. Uh, I use organic treatments in my hives. I use uh, Mitoway Quick Strips, uh, which is a, a, a formic acid treatment, and I use oxalic acid. And <clears throat> I've only just started using oxalic acid, so I can't speak to its effectiveness, but Mitoway Quick Strips, and I'm not sponsored by them, but Mitoway Quick Strips, I uh, have. They work extremely well. Now, like I said, my philosophy of beekeeping is simple beekeeping. I used to do alcohol washes. I used to do sugar shakes to determine my mite levels. I don't do that anymore. Uh, I open up my hives, and if I start seeing uh, chewed out cappings, if I start seeing um, any other signs of a high mite load, if I start seeing mites on the bees, uh, that's, when I will, that's when I'll treat. I don't really like killing 300 bees at a time to get an accurate count of my mites. And I figure if I start seeing signs of row mites, that's what I need to treat. Um, having said that, I would absolutely encourage you to check your mite levels in your hives because it's a really good way to learn uh, about how mites interact with honeybees, how quickly uh, they can spread in your hives, how quickly they can uh, spread diseases in your hives, and how quickly uh, you can hit that threshold where the mites just absolutely take your hive down to nothing. But uh, a lot of new beekeepers start beekeeping with really great intentions of being fully organic, treatment free, 
and if you want to do that that's totally fine but you're if your bees are not hygienic bees and don't show those tendencies, uh, you're, you're going to have a broken heart uh, because you're going to lose some bees. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. Well, I think that about sums it up. I hope this video has helped somebody. And if it has, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any other questions, consider leaving a comment. Uh, if, you, uh, if you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you uh, thought it was a terrible video, give it a thumbs down. But leave me a comment and tell me why it was bad so I can improve. Um, like I said, I hope this has helped somebody. And thank you so much for watching.